All right, so we'll get started. Thank you, everyone. I would like to welcome you all to today's Nexus Games webinar that's titled Nexus Tools to Support Solarization of Agriculture in Asia and Africa. Uh, my name is Dr. Musna Alvi. I'm with the International Food Policy Research Institute based at the South Asia headquarters in New Delhi. Uh, I'm also working on work package three of Nexus Games, which is an energizing food and water system. Now, solarization of food systems, and in particular groundwater irrigation, holds immense promise for food security, income generation, and climate resilience in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. However, uh, the tools that support governments, uh, the private sector, and practitioners in helping them identify where and how to solarize uh, and at what scale to ir solarize irrigation are scarce. Uh, Nexus Gains, the initiative is supporting the development, refinement, replication, and scaling of solar sizing tools uh, to be used by planners and investors, including farmers themselves, to make the solar promise a reality. Today, we have an exciting lineup of speakers and panelists. We will hear from two presenters uh, who, who are working on Nexus tools that support solarization of agriculture, particularly irrigated agriculture in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, respectively. We will then hear from two users of such tools about the attributes that the Nexus tools for solarization should have and how they can be applied to, the, to their own work. Uh, we will also have enough time, hopefully, for direct audience engagement. Uh, so as you are listening to the presenters and panelists speak, please add questions that you might have in the chat box or the Q&A box of Zoom. We will get to those uh, 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 We'll get to those questions as the presentations of the panel get over. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our first speaker, uh, Dr. Shilp Varma. Dr. Shilp Varma is a senior researcher for water, energy, and food policies and program leader for the IMI Tata Water Policy Program at the International Water Management Institute based in Anand, India. He will talk about solar sizing in India and beyond from prototype to impact. Shilp, over to you. Thanks, Mosna, and hi, everyone. Um, let me just share my screen and then we can get started. Um, I think several of you know that India is kind of a leader in as far as solarization of agriculture is concerned. I was just looking at some recent data from IRENA, uh, the International Renewable Energy Agency. Um, and according to that, um, of the of the global off grid capacity installed for use in agriculture, um, ninety three percent or ninety two percent is in India right now, uh, and that is mostly in the form of roughly three hundred fifty thousand solar irrigation pumps, um, and I think ninety eight percent of these three hundred fifty thousand pumps or ninety nine even uh, have been installed or deployed through various government programs uh, that are subsidizing adoption of solar pumps. Now, this is still, it's a large number, but it's still very small compared to our irrigation economy, um, which has 20, 21 million um, irrigation wells and pumps. Uh, and every year there is a replacement or addition of about 1 million pumps. So there is plenty of room to grow uh, the solar irrigation economy. And what I'm presenting this tool was developed basically uh, by EMI in partnership with the Indian Council for Agriculture Research. Um, initially, this tool was developed uh, through support from GIZ for Government of India's very ambitious PM Kusum program, uh, which has a target of three and a half million solar pumps. Uh, and this tool has been adopted by the Government of India for use in that program. But uh, under Nexus Gains, we also hope that we can uh, basically replicate this and create similar tools for use in uh, Nepal, Bangladesh, from where we already have demand but also elsewhere uh, around the world. So I'm making this presentation, but I also want to acknowledge the other people who've worked on this tool. Uh, Santosh Mali from ICR, Paresh uh, from BISA and CIMIT, uh, and Dr. Alok Sikka, uh, who's also from EMI. Now, why are we talking about sizing? Um, well, in the Indian context, um, one major reason is that um, as I mentioned, 98, 99% of the pumps are installed with public investments. Uh, the government is offering uh, very high capital subsidies for, for the farmers to be able to adopt these pumps because even though prices have fallen, um, solar pumps are still out, out of the reach of uh, smallholder farmers. Um, and when we are deploying public investments, we want to make sure that those investments are, are fully utilized. 
so if you oversize these pumps then uh, and most of these are off grid uh, then they will have the potential to generate energy but that energy will not get used and that would be wasteful and at the same time if you undersize them uh, then the farmers will not be able to basically achieve uh, the objectives of meeting their irrigation requirement uh, and that would create a, a, a poor user experience and it's unlikely to scale so for for both undersizing and oversizing um we are going to face problems therefore right sizing is very important i just mentioned there is a plan to install 3 and 1/2 million solar pumps in india um and that's already a very large number which is you know uh which will basically entail billions of dollars of public investments and also private investments because farmers are also going to contribute so we designed this tool basically so that the users uh, can actually know what is the optimal size uh, to maximize utilization and maximize not only utilization of the solar resources but also the funds uh, that are being deployed now what we have right now is a beta version uh, because this is not field tested actually the government of india's program is going to field test it and we have committed to continue supporting newer versions of this tool but um, there as i mentioned there is now already demand for similar tools from other countries um, what we have is a very simple excel based model um, and the reason why we wanted to do it in excel is because excel is available almost everywhere it can function in offline mode uh, so even in areas with poor connectivity it can work it has a lot of preloaded data so we basically you india fortunately has a lot of secondary data sources uh, which are quite reliable uh, so we have used as much as secondary data um, from government sources uh, as possible so that even if we don't have user data we can still run it uh, using the secondary data sources but at the same time we have created uh, room so that if there is user data available uh, then the user can basically override the secondary data and actually come up with a with a with a result from the tool which will be specific to his or her uh, field so it can work at a broader uh, regional scale so for a region you can say what is the right size but also at the farmer field level so it's suitable for both data poor as well as data rich uh, environments if we have the end user available for inputting data we can give more specific results if we don't have the end user available then we can still have some results are uh, using the secondary data sources now the 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 model has basically three modules uh what we do is we look at the location for which the pump is to be deployed the uh, using the climate data the cropping pattern uh, we can use secondary or plot wise cropping pattern from the user uh, and plot sizes we can again use average plot size uh, for the district uh, or the region or the actual data from the farmer or the user Uh, to compute the irrigation water requirement and we use the standard fao methodology uh, for doing that we use this uh, crop water requirement to then calculate system head by also looking at what are the water sources what are the irrigation methods um and uh, what are the irrigation equipment available for use uh, and then we use both of these uh, to to come up with what should be the design discharge uh, but we we also have a scenario module uh basically whenever a farmer makes a decision on buying a pump uh then it's not only dependent on their current requirement it's also dependent on their expectation of future requirement because a solar pump for example uh promises to work for 20 25 years so we have created that module so that uh, we can simulate what would happen if the groundwater table for example if you're talking about a groundwater source if the groundwater table was to go down by 20% or if the crop would change and uh, crop water requirement because of uh, rising temperature if the crop water requirement was to change so we have built in that scenario module so that with all these three modules um since this tool was designed for the government of india the government of india has a list of 13 specific models that the policy supports uh, and then it matches the results of these competition uh, closest with the module that the government is supporting and provides the recommended pump size and model but this last component can be basically altered uh, if the same tool is to be used in some other context um this is some of the data requirements for computing these 
Uh, I'm not going to go into the details, but this is what we have used from the secondary data. And the same can be imputed from by the user if you want more specific results uh, for a farmer's field. Uh, what we have available is basically a, a, a beta version, um, which is also now available on the EMI's website. And I would encourage every one of you to take a look at it, play around with it, provide us feedback. There's also a very simple user manual uh, which provides the architecture, the design, the equations that we've used, but also a step-by-step -step, uh, guide on how exactly this tool can be used. Um, and I would encourage all of you um, to, to play around with this tool and provide us uh, feedback. Uh, what are the next steps? As I mentioned, EMI and ICR have committed to supporting the Government of India in further development of this tool. We are hoping that as more and more people use it, there will be feedback and we can come up with future versions. MNRE and GIZ are right now working uh, to develop a mobile version and an online version of the same tool with the same architecture. Uh, so there will be a mobile app and that will be part of the PM Kusum app that the government is working on uh, and an online version as well. Uh, this tool is also part of Nexus Gains uh, innovation profile. Uh, and we have listed it as an incremental innovation. There's already some work that has been done and we want to build on that. Um, and there is now, we've just started work on replicating this tool in Nepal, uh, again, uh, in partnership with GIZ, which is also uh, leading a solar program in Nepal. Um, but there is also some discussion on doing a similar tool for Bangladesh. And we are hoping to work with the International Solar Alliance to also take it to other countries in Asia and Africa. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Shelp. It's great to hear that the tool is already in use uh, by various stakeholders in the region. Um, and this was a, this is an excellent presentation. If you have any questions for Shilp, I would encourage you to please add them in the chat or uh, preferably in the Q&A box that you should see at the uh, bottom of your screen. Uh, we will hear next from Hua Xie. He's an environmental systems researcher focused on water, energy, and food linkages. Uh, and he's based in Washington, D.C. with IFPRI's Natural Resources and Resilience Unit. He will talk about uh, his presentation is an online tool for sizing groundwater fed solar irrigation systems in sub-Saharan Africa. Hua, over to you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to be a speaker at this webinar. Let me first share my screen and uh, I can so I can start my presentation. Yeah, in my today's presentation, uh, I will introduce another sizing tool for solar irrigation systems that's especially designed for groundwater irrigation in South Africa. Uh, groundwater irrigation is where the uh, the irrigation energy demand is concentrated. Um, this tool is still in development, but the initial design has been finished. I would like to take today's opportunity to show you some of the features of this tool and how it can contribute to decision making on solar irrigation investment in sub African countries. Uh, I think the motivation uh, behind the siting tool development is clear. Uh, solar energy is widely regarded as a promising energy option uh, for um, groundwater irrigation pumping. However, um, more quantitative knowledge is needed while making decisions to invest in solar irrigation. The sizing tool present here um, provides spatial analysis functions for solar irrigation system sizing at a fine scale of a one kilometer by one kilometer land grid. Users can define the spatial action of the, of the an 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 analysis, analysis uh, which may cover one or multiple countries or even the whole South African region. Uh, the tool is designed as an online tool and the GIS web service is being programmed for its implementation. Um, as, the as the internet speed in South Africa is often suboptimal, uh, we are also considering um, developing an offline version for local use. Uh, the results of the spatial analysis contain information about the spatial variability of the performance of the solar irrigation system. 
So this type of information may be of particular interest to governmental agencies, donors, or private sector who can use the information to prioritize their investments in solar irrigation. Uh, of course, farmers can also use the site specific data provided by the tool to help them to make an initial decision on whether, on whether to adopt the uh, solar irrigation. The development of the sizing tool is based on several past, uh, past studies on solar irrigation in the South African region at a continental or national scales. Uh, here is how the sizing tool works. Uh, before running the analysis, users will be asked to make an initial selection of the crop to be irrigated, uh, the irrigation season, and uh, the irrigation method. Uh, this table shows the options that are currently inclu included in the tool database. They can be extended as needed. The diagram on this slide shows the sizing model that drives the analysis. Uh, the sizing calculation involves using spatial data on climate, social ingredients, and the active properties. Uh, during the process, the irrigation water demand and energy requirements for groundwater pumping are estimated first. Uh, the required capacity of solar panels is then determined given the estimated energy requirement and the solar irradiance conditions. Uh, in real world, the adoption of solar irrigation also depends on its cost relative to other energy options. As suggested by this diagram, the tool also, provide, also provides functions to estimate uh, the life cycle cost of solar water pumping system and uh, allows for compar uh, comparison with other energy uh, options, such as diesel pump. The main spatial input data and their sources are listed in this table. Users will be able to replace uh, their data if they uh, replace this data if they think they have better data to use. Uh, the groundwater irrigation suitability layer uh, merits uh, particular mentioning. Uh, this data layer displays a geographic domain considered with suitability for groundwater irrigation development. It's produced using multi criteria evaluation approach by weighting the suitability score uh, evaluated against multiple uh, environmental suitability criteria, such as terrain, groundwater table depth, and obtainable crop yield and irrigation. An example of the suitability domain for made is displayed here. The sizing analysis is limited to this suitability domain. The selection of the environmental suitability criteria and the score scheme is based on subjective opinions. So users are encouraged to upload their own groundwater irrigation suitability layer to inform the analysis. The table on this slide uh, lists the key non-spatial input parameters for the sizing analysis. Uh, the values on the far right column are the values we used in a previous study for Nigeria, Nigeria the country with the largest potential for irrigation development in Africa. Users can work in an interactive mode and uh, make change to the values of these input parameters so they can explore the sizing analysis result and the different scenarios. A collection of uh, key output data layers which can be generated from the sizing analysis and delivered to users are shown on this and the next slide. Uh, I used the results from the continental level analysis on flood irrigated dry season maize as example. The data layer on the left on this slide uh, displays the water demand for irrigating one hectare of maize in the dry season and the calculated the solar panel capacity requirement is displayed in the right in the right figure. Uh, as shown on the map, the solar panel capacity requirement varies significantly across the region. The data layer on the left on this slide shows the break even in full cost of the solar system, uh, which is used a metric for the cost effectiveness of solar irrigation relative to diesel irrigation. 
the break even installed cost is the maximum installed cost of the solar up to which solar is more cost effective than uh, alternative irrigation technology here a diesel pump the break even cost can be uh, reclassified to produce symmetric maps to display the recommended energy solution for irrigation by location by taking the assigned solar installed cost as a cost break even value. Such a map is displayed on the right on the right side by taking a solar model installed cost value of 2.5 US dollar uh, per watt. The area where solar irrigation is cheaper is displayed in green color on this map. Uh, finally, in terms of next step, uh, we'll refine the uh, tool design, especially the design of user interface. Uh, more web service programming work is needed to implement the design. We will also integrate climate change impact uh, assessment functions into the tool if time permits. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you so much for, uh, for this comprehensive presentation. And thank you to all of you who've already been adding questions in the Q&A. Um, again, if you have any questions for Dr. Hua, please add them in the chat or, or in the Q&A, and we will get to these uh, shortly after our panel discussion. So I'd like now like to move to our, uh, to our panelists. We will now hear from two uh, next users of these solar sizing tools on their thoughts on the tools that we've just um, heard about. Uh, I would like to start with Karen Genere. She is the CEO and co-owner of Enos Ag. Um, Enos produces uh, the sunlight pump, which is a surface solar water pump designed specifically for smallholder farmers. The pumps are sold in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Uh, so a, a wide sort of uh, geographic coverage of these tools. So Karen, could you please tell us a bit about your company and your solar pump? How much does one such solar system cost and how much area on average is irrigated with this pump? Um, and, you know, in responding to these questions, we would like to know if you think that the solar sizing tools that you've just heard about, uh, do you think that they can accelerate the uptake of pumps in the regions that you are selling to? Um, why or why not? What do you think is most useful? And do you imagine a situation where these tools uh, can be used by yourself um, or by your peers and vendors and smallholder farmers that you work with in the industry? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, it was very interesting to listen to uh, to to my uh, to the present uh, presenters before. Um, just a quick uh, um, introduction, you know, uh, regarding Ennos. So Ennos is a Swiss-based uh, uh, company. Since 2016, uh, we are in the market with the Sunlight Pump brand. It's um, so here in Switzerland, we design. Um, the, the sunlight pump, it's, uh, we have two models right now. Uh, it's always like, um, it's a surface solar water pump. Uh, one model is more for really small holder farmers. So you can pump up to 22,000 liters per day in solar mode. And the next generation is now the, the 2HP uh, sunlight pump where you can pump it up to 200,000 liters per day. Um, the design is made here in Switzerland, uh, manufactured by chain irrigation systems in India. So the all pumps uh, will be shifted from India directly to our dealers all over the world. Um, you know, regarding price, this is this is always the issue. You know, uh, to, because we have we uh, we designed actually a, a product for smallholder farmers, meaning that though. Our end customers, they do not have the, the financial capacity to, to buy uh, such a product. So there's always then the issue about um, maybe also subsidies programs, what we also heard from Philip. And this is always then, that, that's actually our challenge. Um, what our business models look like this, that we, we do not uh, sell um, pumps directly to end users, but to dealers. So um, we, we are always in touch with local companies uh, in different countries and they have then the network and the contacts to end users. And what we have seen so far, a few of our dealers, they really can sell directly, direct sales to end users, but most of the time either there is an NGO uh, with a project involved or there are subsidies. Um, supporting the dealers uh, in selling the, the pumps. 
re regarding the tools, you know, I've just heard, uh, it's, it's really great to see that there's an effort in this sense. Just to tell you about uh, two years ago, um, we made a survey in Kenya. We were asking a, a, a dealer in, in Kenya to, to tell us about the habits of smallholder farmers there in Kenya. You know, about uh, what's the size of their plot and what kind of irrigation solution do they use. And what we have seen, um, it's like for maybe 4,000 square meter, like for one acre, they're all, all of them were using an oversized diesel pump, really like a 5 HP diesel pump, flooding the fields and you know all of you you know then then you 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 wash out the the minerals you destroy plants etc and the thing is actually i think there's a, a lack of understanding uh for the for the uh, farmers you know what would be the best uh irrigation practice and you know, we have, um, so my, my company, we are, uh, our strength is in, in, in the uh, technology of, of uh, electronic uh, um, uh, DC process motor, you know, that with a long lifespan, et cetera, that we uh, um, create, a, uh, that we develop um, a robust pump, you know, really for rural areas, but we are not, um, we are not the specialists for to to support our dealers in telling them, you know, how to um, persuade or how to teach farmers what is the best for them, and that they believe that with less water, either they can even um, there is no wasting of water. Ground level is not going down too too quickly of the water, and nevertheless, even with less water, they can have maybe, a, they can have definitely a better uh, harvest than just with the flooding system. And for such, you know, for what you're presenting now, you know, uh, that you're bringing now this tool uh, where our dealers can uh, also benefit to have a look at it and to have a tool and to, to discuss this with the end customer to say, listen, um, now we can, you can, I, I can, I can tell you also our, our, how, how much of water you need because you're planting tomatoes or mice or whatever. And so then there is the, you can see the water demand. And for example, we from our side, we also have a configurator where, it, where we can then also tell, okay, when you have like, there's a need of 18,000 liters per day, you do not need to have the full uh, size of panels, for example. So we can support them um, with our tool to optimize the, the setup actually, the irrigation system for the end user so that he can benefit in the best way that you also mentioned it, Philip, you know, to, to not only to have the look right now, but maybe you start with something and that you can see also maybe in two years you need something else or, or a stronger one, or even that you can see, okay, I have here a system, I can share it because my, my water demand is not what the system can deliver, so I can easily share it with my neighbor. So, actually, yeah, I'm talking a lot. I hope I have not already uh, uh, used all my time, but um, yeah, thanks, thanks for all the efforts coming from from your side. It's really great to see, and uh, I'm I'm happy then to to go on the website and to have a closer look at it. Thank you, Karen. It's great to hear that you find the tool useful. And I'm, I'm really excited to see, you know, where this goes forward. I think uh, as, as researchers, when we are working on these kinds of tools, we are always hopeful that what we are developing is actually used by, you know, end users or, or practitioners and policymakers. And so it's great to see that, that you find these, these tools useful. I'd, uh, I'd now like to move on to our next panelist. We will hear now from Tesfaye Hailu. Uh, Tesfaye is the country director for Ethiopia for Power for All, uh, which has support from the IKEA Foundation. In this function, Tesfaye is bringing together all of the actors who are interested in accelerating the access uh, to energy solutions in rural areas, including solar irrigation pumps. 
So Tespe, um, a similar sort of question to you. Could you please tell us a bit about your program? What are you specifically working on in Ethiopia? And after that, I'd, I'd like you to reflect a little bit on the solar sizing tools that you presented earlier and whether you see use for them in the Ethiopian context. And what are some kind of changes that you sort of think that the, these tools need to incorporate uh, to be more um, context specific for Ethiopia or maybe for other geographies where, where you know, you have more experience of working? So, you know, what do you think works? What what might not work? And what are some tweaks that can be introduced to be more useful to more local country context? Uh, Tesfe, over to you. Thank you. Thank you for the introductions. And I'd like to give thumbs up uh, who, to those who develop this software. It's really useful. I will come to it later. But... As power for all, yeah, uh, as you've described it well, we are an IKEA funded uh, project uh, called Powering Agriculture Ethiopia. We also run it in Uganda. So essentially, our main objective is to see increased use of uh, solar powered pumps by the smallholder farmers. So while we focus on the demand side, we also work on the supply side. So essentially, we have three pillars on our work. One is providing technical assistance directly to the government entities and say refining their policies, irrigation strategies, energy policies to sort of uh, have it or enable for the private sector to be actively working in part with the government. So that is one area of our work. Second pillar would be conducting market assessment research to sort of understand grounded values on the type of you know uh, specific needs of the farmers the type of uh, pumps that they require the kind of market activation that is required uh, kind of synergies between the farm level and the purchaser at the city level and how do you link it so this is a more of a comp comprehensive kind of research studies that we do in, in, in different areas and the third is bringing uh, the different actors within the small order uh, within the uh, solar powered systems in ethiopia which is government actors development partners private sector and small order farmers so this is how we frame it in terms of bringing the supply side and the demand side uh, right now we are actually starting uh, to conduct uh, market assessment studies on uh, with uh, a social enterprise who are working directly with smallholder farmers to sort of increase uh, their productivity. So the social enterprise, they are currently irrigating over 3,300 hectares, working with over 17,000 smallholder farmers, uh, providing them with, uh, you know, uh, analysis, uh, agriculture, kind of mechanization inputs such as seeds tractors what have you but one challenge that almost that we all agree is they have identified that pumps that they purchase they are not uh, well sized or appropriately sized so most of the time uh, this guy they have reported that they use diesel pumps because they are easily available and the farmers they are aware of how the systems work so it's a bit difficult uh, in a market where one the solar pump system is a bit expensive and two when the importers are essentially importing in bulk uh, which essentially doesn't fit the requirement of the farms so that in a way has uh, backfired from the farmers in the sense that this this solar powered pumps either are oversized which makes it very expensive and for the farmer you know they are ex extracting loads of water and reaping lower benefits however paying a higher stipend for the purchase of the system so at the end of the day they are not happy with these systems on the flip side the, some of the farmers who have received solar power pumps which are undersized essentially feel that the solar power pumps are not appropriate for their farms and they would rather shift to towards using diesel pumps. So this was a major problem that we have because, uh, I mean, for instance, when for this uh, private sector in, uh, importers, it's easier for them to, to import a single type of pump and just distribute it throughout the farms without consideration of 
the need, the farm size, the water availability, or the crop type. And this has become a problem. Uh, so when I come and see your, uh, what you've developed right now, it's, it's very critical, it's very crucial for our use to sort of, you know, give the, the, the importers like, you know, you, you can use this kinds of softwares or applications to size your, your pump sizes to a specific market. You know, it just gives the opportunity for importers to, to really understand the type of um, solar pumps that is required by the farmers and appropriately size it before importing it. That's so that I find it very useful, and I, I, I will uh, follow up with, with you guys, Philip and Zua, uh, to sort of how do we size it in a, within the context of Ethiopia. Uh, but following, so I would also like to pose two questions in the in the sense that this application would it be possible to uh, essentially like understand the savings made. Uh, from diesel power to the solar pump at that kind of configuration. That is one. Two is, would it be possible to also calculate the carbon dioxide removed as a, as, as a result of moving from a diesel to a solar pump? Over to you. All right. Thank you, Tespe. And thank you for getting us started with the questions. Uh, and I was actually going to open the floor for questions, but I wanted to give the panelists and the presenters the first chance to ask questions to each, to each other. So thanks, Tespe, for getting us started. Actually, I want to invite Shilpa and Hua to respond to Tespe's questions, and then we'll take more questions as they come along. And I just want to encourage our uh, participants who are joining us uh, from all over, if you could continue to please type in your questions in the Q&A box, and uh, we'll, we'll get, get to them uh, through the duration of this webinar. So Shilp, do you want to respond first? Yeah, OK. Well, I, I I want to talk about this Ethiopian context first, uh, because that's a, actually very interesting. There is a lot that's happening in Ethiopia. Uh, and we are actually working closely with the International Solar Alliance and the government of Ethiopia. They have constituted um, a working committee uh, to develop a roadmap for solarization in Ethiopia. Uh, and agriculture is one major component of that. Um, and um, um basically there is there is a lot of interest in in developing an ecosystem that will enable the government to promote solarization so what what would be interesting to know is how i think when we when we developed this tool in india one facility we had was there was a lot of rich secondary data available so we were able to create this tool in such a way that even without end user inputs, we can actually get some results. But uh, if we want to do a similar thing in Ethiopia or any other country context, um, I'm not sure we will have that, that richer database available. So if that is not available, then how, who do we approach? Can, for example, Power for All uh, help us um, create that all the data that will be needed to create a custom tool for the Ethiopian context, or are there others uh, that we should approach? I think that's a discussion that that I would love to have with you uh, um, in more detail and uh, work on that. Over to Hua. Uh, Hua, you're muted. You might want to unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, I think um, I think I can uh, first answer this this quick second question. It's about whether it's possible to add more functions to evaluate the uh, uh, maybe carbon um, uh, emission, greenhouse gas emission uh, from the solar irrigation. Uh, yeah, it's possible. We have some. We actually we can calculate uh, provide some uh, uh, calculation result in this regard. Uh, we are also actually uh, the, uh, I'm, I'm more ambitious uh, goal is to maybe to evaluate the uh, carbon footprint through the value supply chain of the uh, uh, solar uh, solar um, energy equipment because for uh, most of, of sub African sub African countries they need to import those equipment for other countries. 
So it's better to take a uh, take a life cycle assessment, life cycle assessment approach to evaluate the carbon footprint uh, through the uh, supply chain. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure uh, what, what's the first question. I'm I'm trying to answer the uh, some uh, questions uh, through the chat box. I'm not sure I, I get the first question. So, what, mm. what's the yeah, the first question was savings made as a result of pivoting towards using um, solar pump as opposed to using diesel pumps. Um, I think our tool can provide a cost comparison um, between the cost, life cycle cost uh, of using, uh, uh, of adopting solar pump and using diesel pump. Um, I think this can provide some um, information to support the uh, uh, distribution of solar pumping uh, system, and um, I think the uh, the difference um, uh, the difference in the uh, cost uh, in, uh, the difference in the cost uh, between the two pumping system adopting two pumping system uh, also provide useful information for designing the subsidy policies um, and uh, for example if for a region if the single uh, diesel pump is considered to be cheaper but if there uh, uh, government agency may provide subsidy to uh, compensate for the uh, cost of the difference to um, provide incentive for the solar pump uh, adoption um, but uh, of course they need to carefully evaluate the consequence of this uh, subsidy. Also, based on our calculation, the um, uh, the solar pump uh, diesel price, uh, the the cheaper uh, the, the results of of uh, about the cheaper adoption of diesel pump uh, is actually result from the subsidy on the diesel fuel. So this uh, this um, this call for a re uh, reform of the energy um, subsidy policy uh, at the bigger, from the bigger perspective. Yeah, thank you. And th thank you, Shilpan Hua. Uh, before I open uh, the questions for everyone, or I, there are a couple of questions in the chat that I, I'll read out. So actually, I encourage you, the presenters, not to respond to them live. We can maybe address them live. Uh, but uh, Karen and Tespe, do you have any more questions for Shilp and Hua? And similarly, Hua and Shilp, any questions for each other or for anyone else on the on the panel? No, no uh, further questions right now. As I said, uh, I'm I'm glad to see that there are also activities in this sense. This 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 will help a lot in the future, I guess. And uh, I'm also looking forward to to, to see you now a, a few questions from the from the audience to get the feedback. No more questions from my side and yeah, look forward to uh, contextualize how we can use the tool for the African context. Over to you guys. Okay, so uh, so Shep, there was a question in the chat that you answered that was asking about um, whether the tool is available to transfer to other regions. Uh, could you reflect a little bit on, you know, what kind of, uh, I mean, as the, uh, the tool as it is, exists right now, is it usable globally? Uh, and if and if not, then, you know, what are some kinds of contextualizing that is needed to make the tool context specific? Because I'm sure that, that the, you know, sort of policy context, of course, the agro and uh, agro, I mean, agro, the agroecological conditions, they all, all vary uh, globally. And so is the tool sort of uh, easily usable globally or does it require some sort of uh, contextualizing? Yeah, I think that the, the, the architecture of the tool is, is replicable easily. But as I mentioned earlier, um, currently the data entered in the system uh, is all uh, basically it takes the India data, uh, and uh, what we are doing with GIZ in Nepal is to do exactly this. How can we uh, tweak the tool so that it also becomes uh, usable in Nepal? Uh, so we will need to collect uh, local data, whether from secondary sources or wherever it is possible. Um, but that is for 
the results of the tool that come from the inbuilt data uh, or the secondary sources data. As far as the primary at the farm level, I think the tool is already usable anywhere in the world. If we have user input at the last mile level, uh, at the last user level, uh, then it can be used anywhere because uh, the crop data or the crop water requirement data it uses is the standard FAO uh, methodology, which is applicable everywhere. So if we have climate data of the local so, uh, location um, and we have the end user to provide input on the specific area and the crops, uh, then it can be used already anywhere. But um, I think it's, it's one thing to have a tool which can work at the micro scale, but for, for it to be used in the uh, in the policy domain, it has to be able to present results at the regional, uh, district, state, uh, province level uh, and national level. And for that, it will require some contextualization uh, to basically input the secondary data. And that's the work we are uh, just starting in Nepal. And hopefully that, that will tell us uh, how much additional work will be required to do it for every country uh, from where we have such a demand. Yeah. Uh, so, so Shilp, staying on you, uh, a question from my side, I guess, uh, solar sizing tools can be pretty data intensive. Um, and so, I mean, in the Indian context, you know, for some states, we have very good data, uh, and in others, we might not. So, I mean, broadly, what has been your experience? Do you think we have enough good data for these tools to make a difference and to be viable and, and to actually do what we think that the tool is saying, we think that the tool is doing? Actually, it's all, it also links to a question that Matthew asked in the chat. Um, who are the people who are using it? Is it farmers? Uh, so far, no. Um, I think that uh, most of the farmers, uh, we haven't tried this tool with. Uh, although that is something that we now want to work with the government. But so far, the people who have been using this tool are primarily government officials, uh, bankers, uh, and also some uh, solar developers or companies uh, who are actually marketing the tools. Um, so at their level, uh, the, the kind of scale at which they want to operate, we already have very good data. Uh, but if we want to use it at the farmer field scale, uh, there we will need, as you said, it is data intensive. And um, many farmers may not understand the data requirement or may not have the data readily available. And we need to work on that. And we are hoping that um, as this India tool gets used more and more by farmers, I think we have the largest number of farmers using solar pumps right now, anywhere in the world. Uh, as more and more farmers here use it, we will get uh, some feedback from them on how, how future versions of this tool. And I think one development that is going to help in that is the mobile app that uh, the government of India is now making making this tool available through a mobile app. And now with the you know penetration of mobile phones in India, uh, we are hoping that uh, many, if not all farmers will be able to use it and then provide us feedback uh, on that. And the app is based on the Excel tool. So at the back yes. end, the app is doing yeah. Excel. Okay. So the architecture is the same, uh, but it's basically being converted into a Android app. Okay, that's excellent. Uh, who has similar question for you? I mean, from the sub-Saharan context, uh, again, you know, what kind of data is needed and, and do most countries have good, good enough data to make these tools viable? Yeah, I agree uh, with uh, uh, Shilp's comments. Yeah, data is always a concern. And for me, uh, based on my experience, um, uh, hydrogeological data of, um, in Africa is, uh, I think, is really uh it's really highly uncertain. So uh, this result in also result in large uncertainty in the estimation of the uh, uh, energy requirements for groundwater pumping. Because in our tool, we actually, uh, it actually contains a module to estimate the drawdown of, uh, from the groundwater pumping. And uh, this is, uh, uh, this, this type of calculation is not easy and the, uh, it requires uh, data um, uh, from about uh, quite massive data about the uh, aquifer properties. So far, we used the, uh, the data uh, derived from the uh, African groundwater maps uh, uh, 
divided by which is of the service. Uh, there are also some other uh, data. Uh, there, there are also uh, some uh, other uh, other hydrodynamic data from other sources. Um, yeah, but uh, they look. Uh, uh, they, but the, all, uh, they are all um, the estimate. You know, this data set are all highly uncertain. So I think um, uh, I expect uh, um, the further improvement of our tool will depend on the development of this. <laughs> hydrological data. Yeah. Mm. So far, we just okay. try to put the best the data available in the news. Oh, beautiful. Uh, so I had a question for uh, Karen and Tesfe. Um, There's some evidence that solar irrigation pumps deplete, you know, could potentially deplete water faster than diesel or petrol pumps because um, farmers do not pay a variable cost for pumping water. Um, and Tesfe kind of spoke a little bit about that because how, how you know, the subsidy system is, is distorted towards sort of larger pumps, even though they might not be needed or, you know, uh, oh, sorry, Karen, you had mentioned that, you know, farmers are using much larger pumps than they need. Um, is this something that we should be concerned about even for solar pumps? Uh, and, and, you know, one instinctively can think that, yeah, these solar sizing type of tools, they help because they help you decide exactly the size of pump that you need so you're not sort of buying a pump that 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 exceeds your the needs for your farm so you tend to uh, irrigate less or irrigate just as much as you need uh, but because there is no variable cost there's just an upfront fixed cost which is often times or in most cases you know subsidized at least initially uh, in most countries is this is do, is over irrigation something that we should be worrying about and then how do you see sort of these solar sizing tools help help fix that issue a little bit i guess I guess where we can start with you. Yeah, okay. Um, I think that's a very good question because something that we've always over overlooked at. But looking at uh, this question from the smallholder farmers, I, I, I wouldn't be worried that much because uh, right now, I mean, within the context of today. So, as in today, there is not much application of solar pumps in Ethiopia or in the East African region, for that matter. Um, secondly, these farmers are only able to purchase small power pumps, so they are not able to over abstract the surface of the groundwater. However, with scale, uh, definitely this would become an issue. Uh, with time, when these systems uh, are you know, massively adopted, the issue of ground and surface water becomes an, becomes a challenge. So you know, uh, in terms of deploying this the systems, there is, there would be a great need for you know groundwater uh, balance that is to be met prior to distributing the systems. Two is when we are considering large government or private sector funded projects, these systems they use you know they extract huge amounts or huge volumes of ground and surface water, which makes it you know potentially difficult or might be like uh, extractive to the available groundwater unless we are thinking about proper uh, water usage or water management uh, measures in line with this uh, with this uh, adoption so over to you Karen for additional points yeah thank you um you know what I see is um regarding oversizing or so I think um with the tool uh being presented uh, to become easier then to see okay what is the demand of water actually needed and then um there are now different um products in the market there are different solar pump systems in the market you know like surface like submersible with different um um size of panels etc and then actually the thing is the the dealer the local dealer he should then be aware of what is the best solution for the uh, for the end customer and to offer him then the the, the appropriate uh product and the other thing is uh, especially now today uh, we also have um, we can uh, use drip systems you know, in, instead of, you know, just flooding or using hoses, etc., that you're using uh, um, also a solar um, pump um, in combination with a drip or a, uh, with a sprinkler system, which also supports then actually uh, to avoid um, wasting of water. 
And I think there are there are already existing uh, products in the market, but of course it's not yet common. It's not that the, the, the end users are already aware of such new solutions. And of course, then there's always the, the price um, the price factor, which is always a very uh, yeah, a hindrance, you know, uh, yeah, to, to, to start uh, a new technology actually. And that's also something what we are aware of and uh, to, to try also to, to bring also online um, um, online training courses you know for for technicians maybe even for for farmers you know that they can easily get familiar with the new technology to become more familiar and that it becomes easier to to understand how how easy the future could be with solar technology Thanks, Karen. I think a recurrent theme that I'm I'm seeing in sort of both of what you and Tespe said is there also for a need to be some policy coherence because you know the tools can only be uh, as useful as the policy behind it. And so if if policy is going to subsidize larger larger pumps or if there's going to be as, as Tespe mentioned, you know, a uniform policy that has that subsidizes only five HP pumps and that's all you are going to get available in the country, then you know these solar sizing tools are going to have limited. Um, usability and, and and limited success. So I think there is definitely a need for more policy coherence from from, from the side of uh, those who are, who are making these policies and implementing them. Uh, so we are towards the end of our our, our presentation now. I, I want to actually probably invite um, our panelists to maybe give some closing remarks on uh, you know what are some things that they think um, are are needed now to you know make to supercharge these. Uh, so uh, these sizing tools to, to make them more usable um, and also maybe reflect very quickly on whether these uh, we can see these tools also being used for other solar systems in agriculture and food systems so you know things like solar powered fridges or milk coolers or dryers for coffee and other commodities i was in the field recently actually just last week um, with an or organic farming farmer producer organization in andhra pradesh again a very drought prone um, area where they were using completely sort of solarized uh, systems of um, cold storage uh, so just wondering if, if there is any replicability of these tools for other solar uh, systems that are used in in agriculture uh, and then you know your quick sort of closing remarks from each of you um, just to wrap us up so maybe shall we start with you? I was just mute. yeah, okay, sorry. sorry. I was just trying to answer a question that Brian has put in the chat, and I think it's an interesting one. Uh, he says, in developing these tools, have you tried working with dealers uh, for them mm -hmm. to use the sizing tool in serving their customers? And for the the tool that we developed in India, we actually were asked by the ministry of new and renewable energy um, to uh, organize consultations with solar developers. Uh, what we realized was that almost every company that is selling a solar pump uh, has their own tool as well. Um, but uh, their tool is basically talking about, uh, it's kind of like a rating system. So if you buy this size panel, then this is the discharge you can expect. It's, I think it's useful uh, but it's it's not very user friendly. Uh, I don't think farmers understand those tools. Uh, mm -hmm. So the feedback that we got uh, was that they found actually they 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 gave some suggestions which finally went into the uh, beta version that we released. Uh, but they all found this tool to be useful, um, and we thought that those consultations were very very um, helpful because they are the ones who are dealing with farmers on a daily basis. And I think that's that's the way to go in other countries as well. Maybe uh, we need to talk to the, the people who are already uh, selling the systems uh, and engaging directly with the end users. And through them, uh, if we can get more inputs, then um, we will be able to come up with tools which are more readily usable. Karen, a quick closing remarks from you. Yeah, thank you. Um, maybe I can um, add something what uh, Shilp just mentioned. You know, for me, it's also very important not to forget the dealers because it's not 
governments, this is a, a, a very important thing, you know, uh, maybe at the beginning, you know, giving subsidies, etc. But in the end, for me, dealers, local partners who has then the commitment to offer before and after sales services to the end customers, this is the key issue for me. And they need to understand the tools either coming from the uh, a technology uh, provider uh, of pumps, for example, or then uh, like tools to understand the the, the water demand uh, for the for the end customer. But thank you very much for this session. Thanks, Karen. Just very quickly to just wrap us up. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> um, uh, I would say yeah. Uh, as in next steps, this tool, uh, like Philip said, uh, it's going to be very useful at the farm level for the technicians as well, because at that level, when you think about proper sizing, it becomes a bit difficult with the existing information that they have. It's just kilowatt power, kilowatt hours, and water discharge. So this tool would, I think, would be very ideal and appropriate to them. Over to you. Wow. Well, yeah. Last remarks. Yeah, I'm very happy to have this opportunity to share some uh, 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 details about our uh, solar safety uh, study tool. Uh, and uh, I think uh, I will, <laughs> we need to continue to refine the uh, design. Um, in terms of future work, um, um, yeah, I also agree that uh, social economic background of the farmers uh, have very great implications for the uh, Solar irrigations uh, adoption. Uh, this is another direction, uh, another area we are trying um, to explore in the next. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to our two presenters and our panelists for this very engaging discussion. Um, I thank you to the participants for staying. I'm, we've gone a little bit over, but I just wanted to quickly mention that our next Nexus Gains Talks takes place on May 24th, and it focuses on decision support systems in the in Kumati River Basin of Southern Africa. So thank you very much once again for participating in today's webinar. Uh, the recording will be available shortly on YouTube, and we'll also share it with all of the participants. And all of the links to the presentations so the papers that the presentations are pulling from, including the beta version of the tool that Shil presented, are, are in the chat. But we'll also uh, share that with the email when the recording is available. Thank you so much and bye.